All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the neutral game of Street Fighter VI. Now, I have two videos about neutral in general, so this is going to be how do the mechanics of Street Fighter VI change how you should think about the neutral compared to other games, especially other Street Fighter games. But the basics of this video are one, moving in closer, because once you're in closer, you can actually do real mix-ups with throws, and that's definitely still true in Street Fighter VI. And then two, predictive poking. So if you think they're going to walk at you, you just hit them while they're walking at you. And finally, three, if you think they're going to press their button to try to prevent you from walking at them, you can just whiff punish. And specifically in Street Fighter VI, whiff punishment is very consistent. And the way they did this was they made your hurt box very large during the recovery of most good poking attacks. So for example, if Ken does a crouching medium kick in most other Street Fighter games, I would have to be very particular about what normal I used to whiff punish. But in this game, that's less the case. Most buttons will still work because Ken's hurt box is very large. Not only this, but most characters crouching medium kicks are about the same speed and range and that is usually that character's most rewarding neutral tool because it's cancelable. Now there are some exceptions. I'm going to link in the description a bunch of stuff. First of all, I'm going to link both of those videos about the neutral game. I'm also going to link a document which contains a bunch of miscellaneous data of the game and one of the pages on that spreadsheet is going to be titled crouching medium kicks and it gives a very brief rundown of what's the speed of every character's crouch medium kick what's the frame data of every character's crouch medium kick is it cancelable or not and in general how much range is it a below average average or above average range crouch medium kick I will also link a video about projectiles and that video talks about how projectiles work and how you should spend your meter and which projectiles have different numbers of hits and how projectiles work on a mechanical level. But for right now, let's start talking about how projectiles affect the neutral. So not on a mechanical level, but on a strategic level. How should you use fireballs and how should you handle an opponent who likes to throw fireballs? The main thing that I think of when my opponent throws a projectile is the drive meters. So let's pretend that both characters are at three drive meters. What happens if I block the fireball? Well, what happens is Ken ends up with more drive meter than me because I blocked fireball. So my drive meter goes down and it takes a few seconds for it to start regenerating again. So what you want to do is you want to drive parry the fireball and i'm st i'm still negative on drive meter if i want to be neutral with my opponent on drive meter i have to avoid the projectile in some way such as going through it with a move or by jumping over it now one thing you can practice doing is perfect parrying projectiles now when you do a perfect parry, you're still a little bit negative on drive meter. It's the same as drive parrying, but I recover almost immediately. And so what you can do is you can start doing some option selects where, okay, I see them do a move that's parryable and I can like input the parry followed by a move that I want to come out on perfect parry. And this is usually a move with decently fast startup and long range. For example, with Kami, you might consider a light spiral arrow. And this move will only come out if you perfect parry. If you drive parry or you are too late and you block it, then the move won't come out because you'll be in block stun or parry stun. There are also certain things that you can just do on reaction to always punish fireballs. And in the case of Kami, she has a 10 frame full screen invincible super. So yeah, the second thing that you have to watch out for are neutral skips or things that a person can do to potentially break out of the neutral game and get some sort of advantage. For example, if I jump and you block it, I have significant 
frame advantage and now the neutral game is over. I'm doing a mix up on you. And speaking of mix ups, I have a video talking about the mix ups of Street Fighter 6. The thing about neutral skips is that there's a counter to all of them. Most, if not all, neutral skips can be seen on their startup and then punished accordingly. For example, a jump can be anti-aired and most characters have a move that is invincible to air attacks and will just always work as an anti-air. Although even if your character doesn't have one of those, like if you're zangy for something, they usually have some other move that is just designed to be good at beating jump attacks. One thing you have to be careful of though, is certain characters can alter their jump trajectory. And you also have to worry about cross-ups because there's a good chance if the opponent jumps over your head that your attempted anti-air will just go the wrong way. There are also matchup specific neutral skips such as Dragon Lash, which in Ken's case, his heavy Dragon Lash is plus one on block if I'm standing or plus two on block if I'm crouching. However, you can react to it with a drive impact and just kill him. And basically every character in this game has a neutral skip that's unique to them. And in Kami's case, it's her heavy quick spin knuckle is plus three, or she can do a dive kick. And depending on the spacing, that can be plus. And even her spiral arrow, if you space it perfectly, can be made zero on block. Now, besides jumping in, there's also two other neutral skips that a player might use. One of them is Drive Impact. And the way you beat Drive Impact is by reacting with your own Drive Impact. Just for a quick refresher, there is an option in training mode called Drive Impact Defense Practice. If you can't react to Drive Impact, you should turn on this option and practice for a while until you have 100% consistency with beating Drive Impacts. And just so you know what that looks like, if your opponent does a Drive Impact, you need to react. That being said, there are things that you might want to do in neutral that just straight up lose to Drive Impact. So if your opponent is particularly bad at reacting, or if they're particularly predictable in doing these types of moves which lose to Drive Impact, then you might consider actually using Drive Impact often in the neutral game. Although again, I highly caution you against using Drive Impact. That being said, if they do block it, uh, you're minus three, but more importantly, they get pushed toward the corner, and obviously if they're in the corner and they block a drive impact, you get to combo them. The other thing that every character has that is a neutral skip is their drive rush. So when you drive rush, your move gains block advantage. So if I do a move that's safe on block, like this jab is minus two, but I drive rush into it, it becomes plus two on block. So different characters will see different levels of annoying drive rushness. With Kami, you usually just stick to things like this, but she can do things like this, that is minus one on block, or she can do this, that is plus two on block, but has less range and is not a low attack. Or if you want to get insane with it, you can do this, which is plus five on block. Now, maybe at some point in the future, I'll go more in depth into how drive rush works. But for the sake of this video, here are all the things that you need to know about dry rush. At minimum, there is a 10 frame screen freeze, and there's also 11 frames before your character can act, which means that the fastest move that you can do is four frames. So it hits on the fourth frame, which means that there's 11 plus three frames. There's 14 frames where you are totally vulnerable and can't do anything. Now, theoretically, you can shave off those three frames by doing an invincible uppercut, but I don't recommend that for obvious reasons. But this is a very basic thing that you can do from poke range. Like, like this is out of range of most characters crouch medium kicks, but I can still do a drive rush light punch and get significant frame advantage that way. That being said, you can technically react because there's 21 frames where you can react. There's the 10 frame screen freeze plus the 11 frames where the opponent can't act. And technically there's a few frames beforehand because they have to parry first. So technically, if you're really on point, you might be able to see them 
do their drive rush you can react to the green effect and actually counter hit them as they are approaching you now another thing that you could do is just block their drive rush normal and then drive reversal the problem with that is that regular drive rushes only cost one stock and drive reversals cost two stocks which means that you're actually net negative compared to your opponent that is if they do it raw if they cancel into the drive rush it costs three and in that case basically you should drive reversal every time and that's really everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. It's a pretty short one considering the topic is footsies. But again, the majority of what you should be thinking about is contained in my old two videos about the neutral game. So I highly recommend watching high level footage to see exactly which moves those players use in the neutral game. If they're playing Kami, how often are they pressing heavy punch? How often are they pressing medium kick? How often are they pressing heavy kick? Maybe they're going for a spiral arrow. Maybe they're going for dive kicks. Or maybe they're going for hooligan shenanigans. Or maybe they're just going for quick spins and then frame trapping off of that. Watch high level matches for your character in order to learn the best tools your character has in the neutral. And in this case, I would not recommend going to the game's built-in replay system and watching mastering players. I specifically recommend watching known players that go to tournaments and play their character often. But anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you learned something.